Hey everyone, it's Deltron Live. Welcome back to our map making tutorial. So we're currently on the second page of the data module. So first we're going to uh, change some basic stats of our Jim Rayner hero. So time to change some data. The first bits of data we're going to modify will be simple single value fields just to get our feet wet. We're going to change Jim Rayner commando's name, health, armor, and energy. So first let's open up the map that we stopped with last time. If you, if you haven't downloaded it already, just go to the, uh, you just need to go to the map making page, click on trigger module, and then there'll be a download file, a file that you can download. Just go ahead and download this first one, finish product map file, and then just open that up when you're done, when it's finished downloading. Okay, now let's just go to our data module, uh, or just press F7 to get this. So first things first, let's just do a review of, the, of these things. Uh, so we have our catalogs. So right now we just have the unit catalog open. And if we click on one of these, remember we have our object explorer down here. And then we have our fields and then our values. So I remember the catalogs are things like units objects are let's say jim jim rayner is a or this structure is an is a is an object and then fields we have things like the maximum starting life abilities and then values are just the values for those specific fields okay so when you open up the data editor the units catalog should be open by default but if it's not, you can just click this plus tab, edit game data, units, and that'll open up the unit catalog tab. Okay. So the units tab, it's going to show in the same group of tabs as the plus tab that we used to open up the units catalog. Any other catalogs that you open up, uh, will add tabs. And I'll, I'll sh show you another, uh, how it looks like when a, another tab is opened up at the end of this video. So now name. So now we're going to scroll through the list or use a search bar above the units object list to find us like Jim Rayner. So I find it easiest just to search. Just press enter. So now we're going to select Jim Rayner commando. So now we're going, going to modify his name. So you can do this by right clicking modify unit and then where his name is, uh, we're going to name him the people's hero. So just type in the people's, can't type today, the people's hero, or just whatever name uh, you would like to give him. And then just press okay. You can also get that, uh, that window to show up by just pressing enter as well. Okay, you'll also notice that part of the old, man, old name is still there, Commando. Uh, this is because it's not part of the unit's name, uh, but it's the unit's suffix, name suffix. Each ob object can have a prefix and a suffix attached to it that shows up in the editor, but not in the game. This just makes it easier to differentiate between two different objects, two or more different objects that share the same name. In this case, we have three different Jim Rayner units that are used on various missions in the campaign. We use different suffixes to differentiate between them in the editor. So we have Jim the Marine, Jim the Sniper, and then we also have Jim uh, the Commando, which we changed to the People's Hero. So if you want to remove the unit suffix, uh, make sure the unit is selected in the object list, and then look at the list of fields and find the editor suffix field. Okay, so click this, and then on field, we can find the editor suffix, which is here. Uh, so if you double click on the field value, which is commando, you can just erase that and press OK. Another way to do that, which um, doesn't show in the tutorial since the editor has been updated, it shows the prefix and suffix right here if you just, uh, you know, right click here and go to modify unit. So that, that just makes it a little easier. 
than having to go to the field, find it in the field values. Okay, you may also notice that our unit object changed colors in the editor from blue to green. So the people's, the Jim Rayner, the people's hero went from blue to green. Uh, this is just because we changed that data, basically. Uh, it contains data specific to the map that we're working on right now. So the basic color, sc color sc scheme is gray, uh, which is the basic default core gameplay data. Blue is data from a Blizzard dependency or mod, like uh, the Wings of Liberty or campaign data. Orange is data from a custom de dependency or mod. So if you create your own mod, uh, it's gonna the data will show up orange, which we don't have any orange here because we're not using any custom mods. And then green is data from the map file that you're currently working with or things that you have changed. So now we're gonna change his health. So to do this, we're gonna have to modify two field values, life maximum and life starting amount. We changed both values to 650. So again, just highlight the people's hero and then you can look for uh, life maximum and life starting amount, which are these two. I believe you can also go to Object Explorer. Uh, I'm not sure, but I actually don't think, think you can do it that way. I'm not sure though. Um, but basically just find it and find the life maximum in the field and then just double click on uh, the value and then change it to 650 uh, and then as the same thing for life maximum and now you can see since we have uh, sort fields by source turned on it'll show all the data in green and then the blue and then the gray it's just gonna sort them that way. If we have it off, it'll, it, it's not going to sort them uh, by category or by source. Okay, so now we're going to change the armor. Uh, they're listed under the life's armor field. Uh, we are going to change Rainer's armor to a three and then change the armor name to the people's armor. So just find armor. Uh, if you can't find it right away, to search for it. Here we go. So let's change this to three. And then let's change this to the people's armor. Okay. And you can see it's updated here. Okay, lastly, we're going to change Rainer's uh, uh, energy. So we need to modify two field values like we did for Rainer's health, energy maximum and energy starting amount. Uh, we're, both of these are going to be set to zero uh, so that none of his abilities use energy. So energy, let's just search for energy. Okay, energy starting amount is already zero and the energy maximum is zero as well. So basically, if you don't want your abilities to cost any energy, just set these two values to zero for that specific unit. So now we're gonna test it out. So just save and then test document. So basically, uh, now that we've changed some unit data, uh, we're gonna run the map to see our changes. So once the map starts, just select uh, Jim Rayner, who should now be the people's hero. You can see that his starting life has changed to 650. His armor is now three called, and it's called people's armor. And yeah, his abilities don't cost any energy. And that's it. Uh, let's continue. So we just quit out of this. I mean, it's not it for this video, but for that, that section, that's the end for that section. Okay. So now we're going to change the weapon fire rates and damage. 
So we're going to pretend that Rainer doesn't have a special gun that is more powerful than other Marines. He just takes more time to line up his, his shots and hit his targets where it hurts. To, in order to make it seem like that's happening, we're going to change the firing rate of Rainer's weapon so that it's slower than normal and then increases damage that the weapon does. So the weapon period, uh, so the unit's attack information isn't stored in the unit data directly. Sometimes we want our unit to have more than one attack, like the Hydralis or Roach, which have both melee and range attacks. So in order to change the firing rate of the weapon, we need to select Rainer's weapon in the weapons catalog. So you can either do this by selecting the catalog from the weapons tab. So if you click on the plus sign, edit game data, weapons, uh, you can find Jim Rainer's weapon in here. So it's going to be called Rainer Gauss Rifle, this Orner 05S. Or what's even easier than that, uh, more intuitive, at least for me, is just go back to the Units tab, um, search for, uh, he's not called Jim anymore, he's the people's people's hero and then in the object explorer make sure you have this set to on so it'll show the object explorer just go down to weapons you can see his weapon here uh, you can see before it had like three different options for gauss rifle uh, here it'll show the th that the exact weapon for that unit you want so just select that and it'll update the field and values So with the weapon selected, you want to find the period field and change its value to 1.92. So period. So just double click this. Okay. And then change this to 1.92, the period. For some reason, sometimes the first value you click here, it doesn't want to open up. Uh, if not, just right click modify value or sometimes I find that selecting another value first, opening that up and then selecting the one you want opens up. I'm not sure why uh, this might be a slight bug or I'm just doing something wrong. But anyways, it works and that's all that matters. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that should be it. Uh, so that's how you change Again, if you just select weapons, these are all the values for the weapons. You can change uh, these as you like. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about weapon damage effect. Okay, so let me just go back and op open up the tutorial again. Uh, let's scroll down to where we are and look at weapon damage effect. So data for weapons is stored in two different locations. So information about the weapon is stored in the weapon data itself, and then information about the weapon, what the weapon does when fired use is stored in the effects catalog. So basically that's saying that uh, effects in the weapon itself here, or in the weapon, uh, in the effects catalog. So you'd have to edit game data effects to see that. Or if you just, on the object explorer, you can just see the effects, all the effects here, okay, for um, our hero unit. So effects are the movers and shakers in data. Whenever something acts on something else, it does through, so through effects. Abilities, behaviors, and weapons can all trigger effects. For example, the size storm ability triggers a set of size storm effects. Another example is the mothership's cloak ability. Uh, this ability periodically tr triggers an effect that searches for units to cloak. Weapons can also trigger effects when they're fired. Uh, we're not gonna go into too much detail about how effects work in this tutorial. It's a very versatile system, but as such, there's a lot to explain. So basically, effects work in a chain of events that unfolds like a tree. One effect can trigger one or more other effects, each one serving a purpose. So Jim Rayner's weapon is a pretty simple one. Uh, it just calls on a single effect that does damage to the unit we target with a new weapon, or just the weapon. 
So you have his weapon and his damage effect. There's only one. However, for, uh, like the Psy Storm is much more complicated. So the Psy Storm calls an effect which lasts for a few seconds. And periodically calls another effect that searches a small area to find units. This search effect calls an effect on each unit it finds that damages the unit. So you can see um, each unit, different unit it targets has a different effect. Uh, so for example, uh, I'm not for sure, but you know, if you do a size storm on a unit, uh, if the AI is set correctly, it'll move away. Uh, if you have multiple units, it'll do damage to all those units. Uh, it does an area effect damage, whereas Jim Rayner's weapon only does damage to a single target. So you can see it's it's going to be more complicated. Uh, the size storm is going to be effects going to be more complicated in the data editor. So there's also different types of effects. Some uh, some exist simply to call other effects. Some effects exist to deal damage, and some exist to search for units in an area. Okay, so just briefly, this isn't in the tutorial, but let's go ahead and look for uh, uh, the High Templar and look at its effects. So if we click the High Templar and then look in the Object Explorer and click on one of its effects, you can see the Psy Storm it has an Apply Buff effect. Uh, the damage, damage to persistent, and then search. So you can see this is a lot more complicated than Jim Rayner's single uh, damage effect. Okay, then let's go ahead and save. And we just want to make sure that uh, Jim Rayner's attack, uh, attack rate is lower. And that'll be the end of the tutorial. So I'm just going to test this out, just to show you guys. Uh, What's up? So like basically it should be weapon speed 1.92 now. And we'll see how that, that looks compared to before. So you can see he fires at a, at a much slower rate than what he did uh, before. And yeah, so that'll be the end of this tutorial. So. I'll continue with page three uh, in our next video of the data editor. And again, thanks everyone for watching. I really appreciate it. And take it easy, everyone. Bye.